Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing some of those flower coasters and no, not the ones where you put flowers, like real flowers into coasters. We're going to be making, um, using resin to make the flower pattern. So I'm going to be doing three different techniques today. I've got three different coaster molds and we're going to be trying out a different technique in which one to kind of see which result works best. To get started today, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need some silicon molds. These are just off my Amazon store um, and they're quite a nice size because you're going to want something that's a decent size to do this because you need to create that pattern into your um, silicon mold. You're also going to want your casting resin. Um, a, like an epoxy slow casting resin is perfect for this technique today. Today I'm using the Make Art Slow Casting Resin and I've got to say it's one of my favorites on the market and it stays nice and clear because parts of this will be clear so it doesn't yellow over time. So that's the one that I'm using today and I'll add all the links to that below. You're also gonna need some colors. So whatever colors you like, um, it is helpful to have different densities for this one. So you need something that's really heavy heavy bodied, um, so a full opaque, and then you kind of need maybe like a shimmer or um, glitter as well. So a few different options for your colors and different densities of your pigments, whether that's paste or tints or powders. And I guess just like a heat gun and all the normal essential tools that you're gonna need, but those are like the three big things that you're gonna need. Oh, piping bags. You're gonna need some piping bags or some Ziploc or any sort of plastic bag that you can turn into a piping bag. I just want to show you how thick I made the glitter in my resin. I made it really thick. This is rose gold from Color Passions and then I've also got an Art Tree Creation holographic glitter in there as well and it's super gluggy and super thick so that way it doesn't float away. I've already poured my resin into each of my silicon molds and I filled them about three quarters of the way up. Now in my first one I am just adding some blush colour from Artie Sue and this is no longer available but is just a shimmery pink powder. I'm adding that into the centre and then I used a heat gun just to kind of move it a little bit and get any of those bubbles. I always use my heat gun on a really low setting with silicon moulds. Then in the centre I'm adding my gluggy glitter mix. Um, you need it to be really thick and gluggy so that way it doesn't move around in your mould and disperse like glitter always does. And then with some Ziploc bags, I am just going to add my white into that. And in a second, you'll see me knock over a big amount of my pink resin, which I was so annoyed with. Um, and then I decided to move all the resin actually out of the way, which I probably should have done in the first place. Um, but it was okay because I still had enough left for the rest of it. But just keep watching to see what else I do because I do knock over stuff again in this video and get really frustrated. So I am just pouring all of my white and I am using the titanium white from Just Resin. And I just put my um, Ziploc bag over a cup and then I am just twisting up one end and that way it's going to be turning into a little mini piping bag. Now you want to cut off the end but you want to cut off like the tiniest tiniest amount because as you see I cut off a little bit too much and it all started to pour out like crazy so just make sure you cut off like literally less than what you think um, and then I'm just going around and creating a pe petal pattern shape and just following that line I found this quite complicated um, to create a really pretty flower shape it is actually a harder technique. I think also too I didn't make it easy on myself because I cut the hole too big so therefore it was all pouring out and I had less control with it. So definitely cut it as tiny as possible and just note that it's not the easiest technique. So now I am doing my next one and I decided to put my white down first and do a really big petal shape. And then I'm going to add my glitter and then my pink. 
and I realized that I probably should have put the glitter down first um, and created a center instead of doing the white first, but we'll get to that. Um, this is all an experiment trying out a few different techniques because as you can see, I got, got some glitter in the wrong spot and then had to kind of like pull it out and not affect the petals too much. I put the rest of my pink into another piping bag and then tried to cut as little off as possible this time. And now I'm going to be going over my white petals and doing them slightly smaller on the inside of this flower. I did find it was a lot easier without having such a big hole, but still this is a very hard technique if you do not have piping skills. I am not a cape decorator or a piper so I did find this a little bit harder but the more I've practiced it now the easier it has become. With a heat gun on your lower settings just go over your coasters really lightly. This is just to pop bubbles you don't want to um, blow it around too much because you don't want to lose your petal shape. Then on my third one I then added my pink once again into the center and used my heat gun on that and then I also then once again added my glitter into the center as well just to create that center of the flower for this one i'm also going to be using a third color and that is dusty pink from just resin which is a pigment paste and this one turned out really beautiful then with my white again i started doing petals as you can see i'm starting to get better as i progress through this so i did petals about half of the way in my mold and then i added my dusty pink after this Then with a paddle pop stick, I just drag that through the center of each row of petals going into the glitter and this turned out really beautiful. I really like this technique and it created a really cool effect. And of course, as I'm going to leave for the day and turn my lights off, I knock my softbox into my resin. And now my softbox is covered in resin and these two are now gone out of shape. And luckily it didn't land on the third one. That was far enough away, but it did land on this second two. And now they're all smushed and no longer in pretty petals. Oh my god, guys. Yesterday was a bit of a disaster. I cannot believe how clumsy I was yesterday. Like, I'm looking at my softbox right there, my light, and it's covered in resin from where it fell. Um, the only one that didn't get affected was this one. I actually really like this technique. I think it's really pretty. The only thing is, like, it looks better from the top than the bottom, which doesn't, I guess, really matter. But I do think I have been heavy-handed on my like full body pigments in this. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna give it, let's say this was our trial run. Uh, I think this technique worked amazing where we did the flower and then I got the paddle pop stick and dragged it through. I got some really cool patterns. These two um, did get messed up when the softbox did fall on them. So they aren't perfect and that's why we're gonna just do it again. And I also do think I have been just too heavy handed and too much white pigment and I'm not getting like the sort of definition of each petal in this. The white's blending out too much. So they do look really cool from the top even though they're not perfect like because they do get smooshed. Um, they both look really cool. So this was the one where I um, put the gold in the center first and then did my pink pour just um, the puddle and then I went around with my piping bag of the white and you can see some definition in it like you can tell it's meant to be a flower but just on the other side it's blended out so much and the same with this one. So this was the one where I did the white down first with the bigger petals and then did the um, like shimmer pink on top and then the white again. 
I think this is like it's cool but even on the back you can see like you can still see its petals but they're not defined enough and they've blended a bit too much so what I also have decided is it would be better to do the pink first because the pinks actually stay quite together um, and you can see it and it hasn't blended out then the white then the pink again so we're going to redo these um, and see how they turn out with less resin and hopefully not putting a light in them this time. <laughs> So I made a tiny mistake here where I put the gold down first and then the pink and then I realized and so then I just put more gold down. It honestly didn't really affect this too much but I just realized that the pink should have gone down first and then the gold and then I'm going to just start doing my petals. I'm not going to explain this too much as it's the same thing I just did before. So finally I've had some success and by that I mean I did not knock any resin over or things into resin. I am really happy with how these have turned out especially considering this is my first time trying this technique and I hope you guys have enjoyed kind of seeing some of the things that maybe you should not do like knocking a light into resin. But like experimenting kind of like with the different pigments, what you should do first, what you should do second, how much white should you add in, all of that I think is a lot to do with trial and error, um, especially when working with resin because you can never ever duplicate anything with resin. So I think I've had some success with this and I've got some really cool coasters like, you know, not all of them are perfect, but I've tried a few different types of techniques to create this like resin bloom effect and I think I've got it. I do need to practice a bit more of like my piping skills because I do not have, I'm not as neat as probably I would like. Um, the big point I would take away from this is one, don't go nuts on your pigment in your resin because it does expand out. Don't go the whole way to the edge. Um, so I have found with your petals, like keep them probably like a centimeter um, before your edge because they are going to expand out and if you do it right up to the edge so they're just going to kind of go to mush and mush around so um, stop probably at least a centimetre so like big coasters really do work well with this technique um, because if you go like on this one I went up to the edge and now all the petals are kind of like smushed in because obviously they've reached the edge so I would say just kind of keep within um, that one centimeter mark and your center color so your center like glitter whatever you want to do for the center make it really thick so that way it doesn't spread it stays like in that little glute for the center of the flower like it's kind of like crazy how thick it needs to be but make it super super thick um, as you've seen like in when I'm doing it so that way it doesn't spread out because you want the rest to kind of spread out a bit but not too much so yeah don't go too nuts with your petals, keep it simple, keep it within the centimetre, keep your resin thick and don't knock stuff over. I just want to give you guys a big thank you for watching this and if you're new to my channel please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week all to do with arts, craft and DIY, especially with resin, I do work with resin quite a lot. Um, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up as um, it really does help my channel out. And yeah, leave a comment below what kind of style of technique you like best. If you've done this before and you've got any helpful um, hints or tips, leave it all down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching.